Good morning. I'm very happy to be with you here today. And I will give you a brief description of what happened to our museum during the pandemic. The Wind Instruments Museum is located in the village of La Couture Bussy, uh, an historically active woodwind uh, production area, about 90 kilometers west of Paris in the Normandy country in the north of France. It features an important collection of instruments made between the 18th century to the present day. And it also houses archives, tools, and machines that retrace the economic, artistic, and social history of the village and its surroundings. In 2020, as any other French institution, the museum has been closed and almost silent due to the pandemic. From March 17th, to May 11th, and then again from October 30th, 2020, to June 4th, 2021. The lack of sound does not belong to a museum, especially one with musical instruments. Voices, noises, music are all part of the oral landscape with which we are familiar when walking through the entrance. COVID-19 has silenced most of these, and new sounds have replaced the old ones, the old familiar ones, symbolizing the transition from inertly suffering the consequences of the pandemic to a resilient action. During the first lockdown, we had, as anybody else, to reinvent ourselves and focus on new priorities. Regular social media activities has allowed the digital public to keep in touch with the museum, and discover some behind the scenes aspects. The collective effort has been possible thanks to traditional digital technology and the willingness of the staff in reimagining the museum. We doubled the number of Facebook posts, changing the topics from the usual posts on just our collection to a series featuring instruments made in the village, but kept in the European and American museums in an effort to make people forget the lockdown and dream about traveling again and visiting other collections. At the same time, we launched an Instagram account uh, to explore that opportunity too. Um, to not forget a more personal collection, connection in collaboration with a local radio, um, we developed a few short, about three minutes long podcasts on the museum, its history, and the history of some woodwind instruments. That was a first for us, with my colleagues happily accepting the challenge to learn new software, editing audio and so on. In parallel, a new small bilingual booklet to replace the old gallery material uh, single sheets was designed and prepared for the visitors to keep and to reduce as much as possible the manipulation of shared materials. After the first week of lockdown, not knowing for how long that new situation would continue, I decided to focus more on curatorial activities as the inventory of the collection, while at the same time finalizing the project started a few months before to join the platform Google Arts and Culture. That project required a good amount of time to learn how to use this new tool and to write the several stories that would feature different aspects of our institution. The Google project has allowed the museum to make accessible more than 300 documents from the archives, create stories and presentations, translate them into English and share them worldwide. The project was made public on June 11, a week after the museum reopening after the first lockdown. Since the reopening, we can benefit from being referenced on the Google Arts and Culture app. The silence caused by absent public 
and empty galleries are slowly being replaced by the noise of high definition scans, digital cameras and strokes. In a collective effort to digitize as much and as quickly as possible the collections, to exploit the imposed suspension of traditional museum life. To fight the state of uncertainty, we decided to, learn, to launch the ambitious project to, to catalog and digitize the entire collection, a project needed for years and always previously postponed for logistical and organizational reasons. The lack of public has allowed the museum to use the two galleries as working space. The staff, as well as an intern, have been working on cataloging the objects with newly acquired database software. And in parallel, a website project has started, which will become the main access point to the collections, thanks to an integrated online public access catalog. A temporary exhibit with, with its bilingual catalog entitled Leon Leblanc 1900-2000, a man a century, initially scheduled for June 2020, opened in September due to delays in setting up the new temporary gallery and closed exactly two months later due to the second lockdown um, with very little visitors. A mini website was prepared and allowed to see part of the displayed objects. In fall 2020, during the second lockdown, we immediately started planning the 2021 temporary exhibit devoted to Camille Sansons, in occasion of the centenary of his death and in partnership with the Institute for Research in Musicology of the Sorbonne University. This exhibit opened Saturday, 10 July, 2021, accompanied by a 300 pages bilingual book. The genesis of this exhibit well represents the degree of a certainty we were exposed to. Not knowing if and when a temporary exhibit would have been possible in summer 2021, we concentrated our efforts on writing a book on Camille Sansons and wind instruments. And the exhibit, the choice of the topics and the objects, is in fact a consequence of the book which is quite the opposite of what is traditionally done. The pandemic situation has accelerated a process that was already perceived as necessary for a long time. This includes making available the collections to the public worldwide, organizing temporary exhibits and publishing catalogs, enabling the study of woodwind instruments and preserving, promoting, and keeping alive the memory of all people who have worked in the region of La Couture Musée in northern France. Thanks for your attention.